Okay, hi. Today we'll be doing about the kink demand curve, and uh, it's going to be a quick one today. So let's take a look at a sample question. Um, question number four. I'll read it out to you. Um, Singapore Sting La. Okay, which is a special drink made out of a plant which grows only in Singapore. It's produced by a monopolist who faces a local demand and an international demand which has a higher price elasticity. The long run marginal cost of the producing this thing is constant. Okay, um, part one. Okay, draw the demand and marginal revenue which the monopolist faces. So we'll just stick with this one first. Okay, and if we have got time, we'll go to part B. Okay, so. Before we do anything, we need to look at the two kinds of demand that we are facing. Okay, so one, there's a local demand. Okay, local. And there's a um, international. Okay. So they are telling us that the international demand is uh, has a higher price elasticity. Okay, so it's higher. Okay, um, we'll call this international, and so it's, it's, it will be more than the local price elasticity or demand. So basically, it's more elastic. So what's going to happen is that uh, it's going to be a flatter slope, okay, uh, demand international, and this will be your, okay, it will be a steeper slope, will be your demand for the local. So if you're going to combine these two together, okay, let's take note that uh, the maximum price that uh, the international people are going to pay, let's assume it's PO, okay, so any prices uh, that is above uh, PO, okay, there will be no international demand, okay, because, uh, yeah, this is the maximum demand. So if we combine these two curves together, what we're going to get is actually this, okay, so there's P over here and there's uh, X, so we're going to get a steep slope followed by a not so steep slope, alright, so this will be the total demand, which is the demand for international plus the demand for the local. Okay, yes, there's some confusion that, you know, uh, when do we combine the two slopes together to actually get like one straight line instead of a kink? Okay, we'll go through that in another time. So, basically what's happening here, okay, um, if the price is below PO, basically what we're doing is that we are supplying, okay, to, okay, let's for example, is P1, we are supplying in this this portion over here, so we call this X O first. So if you divide this into two, right? Okay, this portion over here, okay, is actually for from here to here is actually for the local demand, and here are all exports. Okay, so that is how we differentiate. Okay, local demand exports. All right. Okay, so now we now we have got this line. Okay, things will be easier right now. Okay, two about it's about three minutes now. Okay, so. Let me use a ruler for this one. Okay, I think it's gonna be clearer. Okay, now let's go. We got this, and we've got this. Oh, I'm gonna get a flu, man. Okay, so local demand, and we've got the international demand. Okay, so this is total demand. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is that we need to draw our MR curve. For the local demand, looks pretty basic, right? So before that, let's uh, mark out this point first. Okay, so this is a point where uh, it, it transits into export. Okay, so from here, we know that the marginal revenue curve is uh, two times steeper than the uh, uh, demand curve. Okay, if you're not sure, go back to the uh, monopolist graph video to check it out. Okay, so we're going to stop here, and now we're going to be confused on how this guy is going to look like. Okay, so if let's say, uh, okay, if I'm going to draw like a, I'm going to extend a line all the way to the p-axis, okay, what I simply do, okay, is I'm going to measure two times steeper, and from where I stopped, I'm going to continue. So this is my MR. Okay, now the reason for this is, okay, um, I can prove to you why they start at the same point, okay, so this point over here. So we now know that the uh, demand curve can be expressed in this manner. Okay, so now at the y x at, at the p axis, okay, we know that x equals to zero. So um, p equals to a minus b multiplied by zero. Then you're gonna solve for for uh, p. So p equals to alpha. Okay, so we know that this point is gonna be alpha. So it's going to be the same for this guy. So let's work out the formula for MR. So, so you take uh, 
this multiplied by by x, okay, you're gonna get total revenue, okay, which is a x minus b x square. You differentiate this fella, alright, over here. You're gonna get marginal revenue, so you're gonna get a minus two bravo x square, right? So this is gonna be p, okay. That's the formula of the line, okay, the equation, right? So you let this equal to zero. This whole thing equals to zero, so p still equals to a. See, so that's why they are the same. Oh, sorry. So that's that's why they are the same point. Okay. So yeah, that's what we got our MR curve. It's that easy. Okay. Um. Yeah. Now it's about five minutes forty seconds. I think let's just do the next part. Okay. Assuming that the monopolies cannot price discriminate, what will be the equilibrium in the market? So they are saying that the uh, marginal cost is constant. So okay, we're gonna draw is uh, one straight line. This is constant, okay. And uh, let's just make it cut through the uh, two points of the MR. Okay, so this is my MC. Okay, so now you will realize that uh, there are two there are two options that the monopolist can choose. Okay, but he cannot price discriminate, so means he can only choose one output and one price. So okay, look at this. This is one point where MR equals to MC over here. That's the profit maximizing output. Okay, and another one over here. We have uh, x naught and uh, x one. So how do we know when to produce? Um, how do you know which price we should be we should be going for? Okay, so just let me get the price for you first. Okay, you can either charge at um, this one over here, which is p naught for quantities of x naught, or you can either go for here, which is a slightly lower price, which is P1. Okay, so how do we know this? Um, as you can see, this part being the marginal cost, and this part being the marginal revenue. So when the marginal cost is on top of the marginal revenue, we have an area of loss over here, area of loss. Okay, and where the MR is on top of the uh, MC, we have an area of gain, which is over here. So let's just call this area of loss alpha and this area of loss uh, bravo so if the area of loss is going to be more than the area of gain obviously we don't want to produce at uh, x1 anymore because for every output okay for every unit that we produce here we're going to reduce our profits okay so we will produce okay at uh, x0 and we'll charge at p0 if let's say it's the other way around, the area of gain is larger than the area of loss then voila well, oh, come on man let's do it x1 and we charge at p1 we cannot price discriminate so we can only choose one so um this is the uh this is how we actually choose okay and since i got a bit more time let's share a bit more stuff with you if let's say they say that the international demand is perfectly elastic okay so that means what we're gonna have is a situation like this x p this over here and um this uh, demand okay this is the, the total demand so we know that uh, for this portion it's very easy for us to draw our marginal revenue okay so I'll just use red pen for this two times steeper stop here and where's the MR gonna be it's gonna be here okay so that's the MR as well alright okay because uh, if you remember when we do perfect competition okay the price line is also the marginal revenue because that's where price equals to yeah price equals to marginal revenue when it's a straight line okay and if you use back the same equation like what we did just now to calculate the a right you will realize that it's at the same point also okay uh yep yeah, so that's all i got to share with you guys thank you for watching